So in our next video, we're going to talk about a model that is a depiction of the failures of capitalism, and that is the dominance model. And the dominance model predominantly represents the perspective of business critics. So what we have here in the background, <clears throat> excuse me, is we have kind of environmental forces here. Now we can interpret environmental forces in a variety of ways. You could say like, you know, dirty air, polluted air, polluted water, things like that. But alternatively, you could look at a country's resource endowments, um, geographical features, for example, England is an island that would be germane to environmental forces uh, for England, uh, things of that nature. Okay? And these environmental forces set the rules of the game for this pyramid here. And at the top of this pyramid, you have this alliance of business and government. And at the bottom, you have the masses. So, the business and government at the top forms kind of this nefarious alliance, and they use their kind of combined power and wealth to dominate those at the bottom, the masses. Some great examples from contemporary history would include the Occupy Wall Street movement, where people said, you know, we are the 99 percenters and we are fighting against the 1 percenters. Alternatively, you could look at, for example, Hurricane Katrina, which is important for the environmental level. In the city of New Orleans, which is an impoverished city, you had those at the top, business and government alliance, kind of taking money from all the other poorer people. However, once Hurricane Katrina hit, these business and governmental elites left the city of New Orleans, and other people from the masses rose up to dominate others. So you had gangs and marauders basically with a reign of terror in the city of New Orleans. So one of the things that I'm kind of hinting at here, which will, will apply for all the models and ontologies, is that you should feel free to plug and play, um, put in the characters that you wish instead of just saying business and government alliance and the masses. You know, feel free to experiment, plug and play as you go. Now a very germane theory to the dominance model is populism. Populism is a movement that has been around throughout history, and it basically says that the common people, the masses, are being taken advantage of, disenfranchised, or exploited, and they wish to take power from this ruling elite. And when they do take power from this ruling elite, that kind of enhances everybody's collective welfare. Now, populism was particularly germane in the 2016 American presidential election. On the left-hand side, you had Bernie Sanders on the left-leaning, and Bernie Sanders was a socialist. And he was saying the masses are being taken advantage of, and he had a solution for stopping business and government dominance. But on the right side, on the right-leaning side, you had Donald Trump, who also said the masses are being taken advantage of. I know how to break up this kind of collection of power between business and government. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that populism is not necessarily something that is left or right-leaning. It's something that uh, can come from either end of the political spectrum. And of course, historically, populism has been around. I mean, you think about the Spartacus Rebellion um, in ancient Rome, where slaves, who are predominantly gladiators, rose up to take back power from Rome's elite, the patricians and the plebeians, as Marx would call them. You can talk about the American Revolution, where colonists felt that they were being taken advantage of by British elite. You can talk about the French Revolution, where members of the Third Estate, which was you know, middle class people and also peasants and factory workers, well, what limited industry there was in France at that time, were being taken advantage of by the nefarious alliance of the nobility and the clergy. 
And of course, as we kind of start proceeding more throughout history, you can think about the um, Russian Revolution, where Lenin basically said those at the top were taking advantage of everybody else, and he promised them peace, land, and bread. It doesn't really matter. These are all forms of populism. Now, another theory that is particularly germane, and you could interpret it as a type of populism, and that would be Marxism. Now, Marxism is a theory that I will have several other videos on a different playlist as we discuss the Communist Manifesto. But Marxism, and again, we're talking about Karl Marx, not Groucho Marx. Marx Karl Marx said that all of the study of history was the study of class conflict. He said, this dominance model has always existed. In the, the Middle Ages, it was the serfs being dominated by the nobility. And when Marx was writing in the 1840s, he said that you had the proletariats, which were urban factory workers, being exploited by the bourgeoisie. In other words, the middle class who had the money to invest in factories and factory style capacity. So Marx was basically saying that through this kind of class struggle that existed, those at the top basically did everything in their power to exploit those on the bottom, and he called for a revolution, which would basically take this model and flip it upside down on its head, crush those at the top, and then power would kind of be more evenly distributed among everybody. It would be what he would call the dictatorship of the proletariat. This wraps up our discussion of the dominance model. Our next model is the countervailing forces model, which basically shows that there's kind of a tug of war between four very different forces and advocates for a more egalitarian power distribution. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.